I promised to do at some point um, an article something like I mean John does workshop blether don't they you know show us your workshop sort of thing uh, because you do all this work in the workshop and nobody actually really gets to see your workshop all you see is a, a zoomed in part on a, a lathe maybe or a milling machine or cutting something and when you're making something you try and every, everything to hand that you're going to use so that uh, you're not wasting time but inevitably uh, you do because you end up with parts you'd forgot to get out or you wanted a different drill or a different milling cutter so I thought to break this down into shows your workshop in one go it'd be massive it'd be way too big I, my workshop's not massive however I've got a lot of stuff in it M most of what I've got um, is second hand so I don't mean to in any way show off or anything say look what I've got because most of what I have got is what I've bought second hand usually through eBay or I've been to um, machine auctions um, through certain vendors and I've picked things up at very very reasonable prices um, some of them I've managed to pass on, renovate, clean, pass on and earn quite a few quid out of it um, which I've enjoyed doing so I thought the first thing maybe to do would be show us your lathe now whether the second one would probably be another part would be maybe show us your milling machine and then I mean, my TIG welder alone would probably take me to do a, a complete in depth would be over an hour long my TIG welder it's quite a, a nice thing bought second hand so we'll do the lathe and show you what we've done and how it works and there's the coffee so this is a Myford Super 7B so let us just go across so that you can see the model which is that now the Super 7 the early Super 7 here this had a, a cast V in it and it had 7 in it for Super 7 this is the later one from 1975 or something it's uh, it's old but it's got the best the better clutch the cone clutch on it which maybe I'll show you but I was pointing at the control panel specifically so you could see because somebody had already asked me about this so as you know I buy stuff second hand so what I bought well, I got this lathe I paid an X amount of money for it off a guy and I travelled to Seven Oaks in Kent from Leeds a long long drive because I thought it was the one I wanted and when I got there I wasn't disappointed it came with the my, uh, the Brook motor which were three quarter horsepower which I believe is a 0.55 kilowatt motor on it uh, single phase and it had the stop start uh, buttons and an NV switch on it and all that uh, but I wanted a three phase and I wanted an inverter so the first thing I did was I kept looking around on eBay and I found a guy normally this sort of thing I wouldn't have bought second hand but I did this guy is an electrician like myself ex-electrician who was selling off a load of stock and I did I had a stack of these and I sold them at car boat and I think I sold them at 30 quid each some lovely IMO Jaguar Cubs they were, the Cubs were single phase ones uh, and I've still got a lot of three phase ones somewhere in my other lock up <coughs> so I ended up having to buy one and I bought that for £60 second hand and uh, it's a 1.1 kilowatt you maybe can't read that from there one but it's got a lot of features that some of the uh, imported ones don't have the imported ones apparently a great inverter supermarket do them I believe and other companies the imported ones and I think they've got everything on that you'd ever need this one's got that and a lot more 
because it's like an industrial one. Um, so it's a hundred and sixty page the manual. It's really, really concise, complete manual on programming that you just wouldn't want to do. RS232 interface and all sorts on it. This panel here, I built this myself and I got this engraved, uh, engraver I used to use when I had my business. Um, I think it was 25 quid. Uh, and a plastic adaptable box and different various controls, normally open, normally close contacts, an e-stop, a jog switch, forward and reverse, stop and start, and a speed control. Now a speed readout, this is knackered. Uh, it's gone duff on me, so I need to buy another one of them. They're not expensive. And a speed pot. Now, I had a lot of people, um, when I first built this, commenting, saying, why would you want 10 turns? Because this is a 10 turn pot from nothing up to maximum. I don't know if you can see the digits, let's see. If you can, yeah, I'm sure you can. Um, those digits going up and down, or down as I turn that, so that's down to nothing. So if I press start, that's it running. I'd need to zoom out now to show you. So that's in standard gear mode, not back gear. And that's running at 1.9 hertz. There you go, it's stopped. So if I set it at 2 hertz, 2.1 there, that is quite powerful. It's I'm not going to jam my hand in there and rip my wrist off, but yeah, it's a lot of power. If you put it in back gear of that, you can't you just couldn't stop it you could obviously if you jammed something in it so let's wind it up bear in mind this is going to be 10 turns to fall 17 18 uh, 19 it's 26 hertz that and it's revving up for 75 I guess. This is the beauty of an inverter. Pick it to 45 Hz. 840 RPM. 50 Hz just over. Right, nigh on a thousand RPM. I've got this set maximum at 60. You can wind this as high as you want it. But I've set in the seat today, I don't need it any higher. I'm not throwing it. 11.30. And that's on... That's on the second pulley from the left. So that's a slowish one. The fastest would be that right hand one, wouldn't it? Shall we try it and just see what speed it does? I can't remember myself. So I've got tension off. I haven't changed this forever. Put that into there. Put cover down. Oh, sorry. Let's see what speed we get. In fact, I'll wind it down a bit first. 20 hertz. Seven hundred. Thirty hertz. Eleven hundred, it's about where it was before I want it, fly out. Forty hertz. Fourteen seventy, nearly fifteen hundred. Fifty hertz. 49.8 at 1800 RPM full speed 2175 uh, according to the book 
a little engraved plate on here. 2105 is its maximum speed, so I'm not overdriving it silly where I'm going to damage anything because it will run at that speed, but I probably won't ever. So we shall put it back to where it was, where I always run it. Okay, let's. So in, at that, I've never. Do you know what? I've never run it on slowest. So let's put it on slowest. This camera's really in where. I'm going to bang back gear in. So on Super 7B, I don't know if earlier ones got the same lever, but it's a very simple lever you drop out that allows you then to bring in back gear. So we've now got back gear in, that's just a brass one. It's usually as noisy as hell in back gear. But I can give you some idea. That is flat out. That's at 60 hertz. That's 32 hertz. 55 RPM. Take it out of ten. Uh, ten point seven hertz. Give this chance to balance. Sixteen RPM. Will it go any slower? You bet. We'll go down to five hertz. I hope this is educational to anybody who's thinking about putting an inverter on a, a lathe. Okay, <clears throat> it's not even reading the speed, as you can see. Yes, you can. That's how fast it's going at 5 hertz. That's 2.5 hertz. And it'll run in either direction at that. You wouldn't want to drive out hard in reverse on these because screw on chuck, but so that's two and a half hertz. Let's see, lowest I can get it to 1.6. That's 1.6 hertz. That's running at. To prove I'm not lying, I'll unclip this camera. fan going round. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, you're a bloody idiot, why would you want to go that slow? I don't want to make in rings. I shall show you. So, give you an example. When I made this ring, When I made that ring, you actually uh, show the light at it. Quite a nice ring that. I think that's proper opal, that one, crushed opal. Um, that is super glue. That's all it is. Now to do it, you put that in a mandrel and you put that in the chuck. And you have to run super glue, the watery, thin super glue on there. And with it going around a bit faster than that, not that speed, but a, a, you know something a little bit like that. And uh, you drip your super glue on and it runs around. Then when it gets to being as much as you need on, you leave it running. Because it's running all the time and it's trying to run off. If you stopped it, a big blob would come to the bottom and it would drip. But you don't, you just leave it running. 
and eventually it dries and sets and you get a lovely finish like that not like that that's been polished but you can get an idea of what I'm on about so yes I do like to have the uh, ability to have that running exceptionally slow so we'll knock it back out of back here and just excuse me a minute I'll do it quicker this way put that back where it was thing when I bought this I stripped it all down um, and I put new belts on because I don't like using that link belt in it clickety clack and it's a temporary belt solution this is permanent so I bought a brand new pair of belts from Myford so the belt in here and this belt is a brand new belt which should last me for many years that if you can see that that's my pickup for my um, digital readout for the speed. This motor is a one and a half horsepower Clark's machine mat motor that I fitted. And it fits okay, but it's very large. It's a one and a half horsepower, but it fit onto the cradle, the same feet mounting. I didn't have to drill any holes, but the shaft diameter were much bigger. So I actually bought a pulley now this is two speed is this pulley arrangement up here and uh, I've actually only got a single drive uh, pulley on the bottom but it doesn't matter because I've got an inverter on it so it doesn't matter so that's uh, the inverter side of it covered and you might think there's a lot of wiring showing behind there and plugs and things I've got a mucky piece of board here and I need to make a new one and basically that fits in there and covers all that lot up let me just make sure we're back to normal yep uh, functions so let's see some functions of we need to be able to see both items I have covered this in another video so that's running let's speed it up a bit So we're running like that and if I stop, that stops and it doesn't stop instantly, it stops at whatever time you set your inverter and their parameters that you can set and most inverters have got that same setting so you can say ramp down speed and ramp up speed so if you wanted to start quickly but slow, slow, very slowly then you set it in the parameters when you're setting it all up. But then I've got crash stop, E stop, which has set to stop killer power instantly. So if that's running and I hit this, you hear the thud. That stopped. It hasn't got DC injection on it, um, you know, DC braking or anything, but it stops pretty quick. And you'll see that this is chucked to wobbler. So. resets it by pressing stop and away you go again so normal stop crash stop so if you're doing something and you want to set a DTI up or something on here maybe you've got your forge or in you can switch this to jog and I've got that set at 1.5 Hertz so we'll have a jog switches in it'll run in either direction at 1.5 Hertz so that's all right for doing setups and things and checking alignment etc uh, you knock the jog off and it goes back some people have that spring loaded but I've got it on the latching switch I think it just about covered all that uh, once you use this arrangement that I've made this no longer works you tell it 0 or 1 in a configuration keypad or remote and this is set for remote so if you're going to fit a VFD you will need to do that parameter I can't tell you what parameter number it is but it'll be in the manual 
and on those import ones which I think most folk will probably be buying uh, it's not a massive manual I don't think so that you'd find it fairly easy and it'd be not or one and not being keypad and one being a remote and the, mi the minute you flick it to one for a remote this no longer works anymore so I, I can't do I can go through parameters on here but I can't control it and start it press run see stop nothing speed control nothing but I can go into certain parameters I don't know again whether the uh, cheaper versions will do this but this one will tell you the current that the motor's drawing which is interesting sometimes because if you were running really slow you might think I wonder if that's overloading it's going to get hot you just go into the parameters and you can read how many um, amps it's taking I don't know it really reads out in watts as well it's quite handy to have that feature what else have I done on here? So let's wind down. I mean, most of what I've done on here, you could do on any lathe, probably little Boxfords and things. Um, you're never going to probably want to do anything like this on a Harrison M300 or a Colchester student or something. They're a much bigger lathe, you know, so. I've done worked in with the parameters of what I've got in this little lathe. And one thing I did do is, you can see it, I made this spacer and put it in. And that's spaced out this from the main cross slide. And that allows, when I take off the uh, compound, there's a hole in there. And I made a where are we? Which again, lots of you will have seen this, but I made a ball turning device for making all these handles that I did for machine, etc., etc. Uh, and it fits in that hole. And I've got made some different wedges that go in, and that tightens up onto there. And you do your ball turning. So when you're doing your ball turning you need the centre of that hole which is the centre of, of this to at least reach the centre of your work and as it's set up the Myford it won't that hole centre stops just before the centre of your work so I put that packing in and now it does goes just past centre which is great while I'm on this I fitted this quick change tool post. Now the smaller one which most people will probably buy is a 250 100, I think it's a 100. No, it might be not, not, not. It's the smaller one than this. And this is a slightly bigger one and I bought it specifically so I could fit bigger tool holders, bigger tools in there. You know for instance I've got that which is about 13 mil in there. That's a quite a big tizzy uh, boring bar that I've got in there. Most of those tools are quite big. I mean, let's see uh, what the original tooling you would get with your typical Myford would be these. You'd fit these sort of size, and that would be your, your maximum that you could go to. Whereas to show you see that's a bigger one I can run up to that I can get that in I think it's 16 millimeter I can get in into it I'm not sure what it is on the smaller uh, quick change tool post but by doing what I did, obviously you create another problem because your deck height, you've got to obviously set your tool uh, cutter to the centre of your work. And they found, I found it difficult to do that. 
So I did one of two things. One is I took this to a guy who in Castleford who does Lockside Engineering, if any of you know him. They do car engine rebuilds and they've got a, a surface grinder. And I got him to surface grind the top of this down three millimetres. Again, I got a bit of stick for doing that, but it works and it hasn't broken. I've done all sorts with it. I've had a couple of jam ups and it, it's not broken it. Uh, so that's lowered that down. And then on top of that, what I did was, let me show you, is I got these on the milling machine uh, and milled the bottoms down. And you see they're much thinner than that. Still extremely strong, but that now will go lower. I've actually made a lot of these myself as well. Um, quite a few. Of one here that I did, a parting tool, I made that one. Out of a piece of mild steel block. Um, that one I made. Made quite a few of them. And bought some off a guy and they were four in a box and the damn things didn't fit the dovetails were too slack so what what else so you'd saw the other night i did a video and i made a, a bush for in here and that is a sleeve knot because the bolt in there is the original uh, 7 16 myford one that goes in the compound and the 14 millimeter one that you get with the kit i didn't fit i didn't want to start cutting the bottom of this out and hoping it, it wasn't going to break out I, I didn't so I just left it as it was so that's another mod that I've done some of you might have seen um, this mod that I did which was to stop this this thing used to rattle this you rattle side to side a lot of them a lot of folk with my fuds and others put needle uh, face bearings in here little needle roller face bearings and they put one at front and one at the back to stop the in and out but that wasn't a problem I had I hadn't got in and out problem and there's an adjuster collar on the back of there to take that lash out anyway my problem was side to side it had worn so I made a bush and fitted it it's on a video if you ever want to go see it being a Super 7 it's got the power cross feed let's engage it Again, this is only for people who haven't seen how one works. Not all uh, lids have a power cross feed. So now I've got my gearbox driving, and if I want to traverse backwards and forwards by moving the uh, lever at the far end up or down, I can make it go backwards or forwards. So that's going forwards towards the chuck. So if you can see that. The handle slowly going round so that's now traversing so if I'm going to do a cut it'll traverse okay take that out if I want to cut a face on a say a piece of four inch plate and I wanted to face it off now only way I can do that is I've got to wind this and anybody with a lathe will know when you're winding this by hand it's pretty hard to get it smooth you sort of use two hands and right carefully feed it as careful as you can but you inadvertently don't get it right so you can engage the cross feed which is a, a button underneath here you pull it until it latches and there you go now that's coming outwards so let's wind it in can you see that? If I didn't want it to go that way, because that's coming off the work, I want it to go into the work. I just simply move my little lever to the other position and that lead screw will go in the opposite direction. So now this whole body that way will travel to the right. We engage that. You see it's going to the right. Excuse the noise, it's all the gears 
So if I knock that off and I want to now feed across the face of the piece of work, I'll just pull that. Underneath here is a peg, and I never knew what that peg was for. A bit silly, really, of me, because the peg. You can see this peg here. What happens is, when that peg reaches there, it'll push that and it'll knock it out so it can't damage it. I won't drive it all that way, there's no point, but you can see what that does. So yeah, you'll know that if you've got a MyFood. So this is to bring in your gearbox down for one direction, up for the other, and that brings a series of gears on a tumbler in and out of here. Those gears at the top are made of tough and all, so if it jammed up it'll break them. The rest of them are all steel gears. Uh, a wonderful arrangement. Let's uh, show you because it's uh, that this is where the old British stuff really does shine. I mean, the gear, the, you know, this is all beautifully geared. No rough cut chunks of old cast iron and plastic. Very, very nicely made. Total loss oil system, so you end up with oil everywhere like that. And a full set of gears telling you what you need to do. The clutch, as you'll operate it, you'll see that brass cord move. You see it? That's running. That's the clutch arrangement and a single pulley at the bottom. And the lead screw protector, this is a slightly longer than normal one. Uh, it might just need cutting down a little bit. And as I've said on a previous video, I'm going to do a mod on here so that I can make um, a carriage stop. So that's another thing that I did. Uh, it didn't come with a tray, uh, a base, but I didn't really want a base to be honest with you. Um, but I got the cast iron spacer blocks with it. Which are there. And I got this tray made. Unfortunately, I asked the guy to put a taper on this front edge um, and he didn't but he charged me 30 quid for it, so I couldn't complain. I suppose I could get some pieces of angle iron or flat and clamp them with some mole grips and sprain it out. But I use vacuum anyway to clean it up. Uh, let's show you something else. So, what else have I done? That's not gonna show very well. Let's wind the camera. Yeah, I'm sorry about all this moving camera around, but it's a bit of an ad lib thing. This I just came out tonight with the idea of having a, a bit of a sweep around and ended up making a video. So, if you can see that, I'll just zoom out a little bit. So, that is a little DRO. That is, a, is basically one of uh, these. And it's your typical one from uh, from Aldi. Eight pound ninety nine. There were not very good, but they work in a fashion. In the Myford, on the tailstock, there's two oilers, one there, and one there. They're two BA. So I screwed those oilers out of the casting. And I made these 2BA little sleeves. I'm going to show you them. So 
So these are little sleeves I made with a hole down the centre for oil, 2BA thread, 2BA socket in the end and screwed back in the oilers. Underneath here is some little nylon packings which I just had to sprain to get through. And that is how this is held on. So that is held on by those two fixings. And then on the front nose there, let me shift that out of the way. I made this, which again, just a piece of aluminium. Uh, and I chopped off all the bits and bats that I didn't need on the, uh, the measuring calipers and left just a lug on there, which I drilled and fixed to there. So that just follows that in and out. So basically if I put a drill bit in and go up to a piece of work and say right from there I need it to be 4.74 millimetres deep and can go in and I can go up to me 4.74 I'm bitten off a bit here aren't I because I'm going to 4.75 uh, or you can go in to here Imperial, 187th hour. It's great for doing a drilling and you, you know, specific length. Is it great? No, it's all right. It's what £8.95 buys you. The battery goes flat quite regular. It's, it's a bit low now, is that battery? Although it's been fairly cold. Um, but it's a great addition. It costs literally nothing to make and I can now measure any depths that I'm doing when I'm drilling so that's another addition that we did that's been great I don't think there's anything else but I'm sure that's enough what would I like to do if it's a bigger garage bigger workshop I'd, I'd like to to have a bigger lathe but it's fine for what I do I'd like to fit the DRO and I'd like to fit a three axis DRO because for the, for the lathe they only do a two in the X and a Y which is that way and traverse up and down the bed and you fit on the, this particular lathe it fits at the back of the bed for the Y and the X fits across underneath here some fit them to the side but you're better off underneath here you don't see it and it just pokes its head out of the back the Z I'd like to be what I've just shown you which is that and I'd like to fit it at the back somehow but unfortunately you've got your handle that locks the um, tailstock slide up and down and you've got that as well for, for locking if you put a, a centre in um, it might take a bit of working out how to do it, maybe picking up off these without drilling a lot of holes in it. Uh, but it'd be nice to have a Z there, so you'd have X, Y and Z, um, and a, a digital readout up on the up on the wall up here. I think that's enough. We've uh, we've shown quite a bit. Nearly 40 minutes of video there. I'm going to have to edit some of that out. Oh, other thing I did, of course, were all these balls. I made all these and then anodized them in the colour I wanted, and you know. They've held really well, not scratched or rubbed off or anything, so it's definitely soaked in well. Um, right, well chuffed with that. The gearbox works fine, um, everything seems to work, there's nothing that doesn't work. I haven't done any thread cutting. I've got a cheat, I've got dies and taps of all sizes, but uh, if you want to do a thread cutting on here, that's your thread cutting dial that you engage. Um, I haven't used it, and I've got some metric that I bought and there's a few people have been asking about these recently that is a a 33 tooth and a 34 tooth and they're saying if you put that in 33 and 34 you can cut metric threads what slightly baffles me that as far as I know this is imperial lathe everything's marked up in thous however when you open that uh, cover 
Well, we not that one. When you open that cover, it says there, metric pitches. So what's all that on about? And it's telling you what you do. Ah, uh, not too sure. So why has it got that inside the cover if it's an imperial lathe? Somebody might tell me. Some of you lads that have had these for a long time and you know a lot about them. Okay. Thank you for watching. We will be doing another video very shortly. Um, I'll give it a quick spin round without showing too much. Uh, and we'll be doing it on that. The lovely old Tom Senior Miller machine. Which I'm sure won't disappoint. Many, many modifications done to that as well. I can't leave things alone. But <coughs> all good mods, I think, anyway. Again, not expensive. So, uh, I'll sign off for now. Say thank you for watching. And give us a like and a thumbs up. Um, and if you like the content, subscribe. And then you'll get a notification when I do something else. As I say, we're going to do the whole garage. Um, but we're going to do milling machine, the lathe we've done. We're going to do the welding set in the corner. TIG welding, I'll show you. The operation of the foot switch that I modified. And uh, drill. Bandsaw. Uh, belt sander with the rotary sander on. Some lovely old equipment. Mitsutoyo height gauge. Bought that at an auction along with the other one at the side of it, Mitsutoyo. That's a manual, digital, sorry, manual vernier scale. That one's all digital. But yeah, that, they're all for another video. Thanks for watching. Right. Um, this is a bit of an add-on because uh, I'd forgot um, this is something else that I've actually done to this machine. Um, how do I do it? Forgotten now. Oh, it's back here. Right. So this is a standard three-jar chuck that I've got in, which is um, a grip true. If any of you don't know what a grip true is, if you ever see a chuck with adjusters like that there, they're Allen screws. There's three of them. If you ever see a chuck like that, grab it with both hands if it's right money, because they are mega expensive. I think I priced one of these up new, obviously. This came with my lathe. I didn't know what it was until I'd had it over a year. It was just a chuck and it ran out about nine thou. I just took it there, it was a three jar chuck and they do run out and I've got three sets of jars for this. One set's a bit tight, other set's an inside set, uh, outside set so you can turn them round. Um, but <clears throat> it, um, I saw an article somewhere about adjusting it and on this back plate, if you slacken it slightly, just slightly, and you get your bar in a DTI. I've done a video on it, so if you look through all my videos, you'll see it. You can tap this thing around and adjust it with these screws until you get that absolutely bang on. It's within a thousandth of an inch, I think. It's absolutely great. But I have got a four-jaw chuck, which will show you. I put that on the back plate. That's wrong back plate, really, but it works. But that's a four-jaw. But that's not what I'm going to show you. So, I also made an adapter. Let's do this properly. So, I don't bug it out up. In fact, let's take this chuck off. I've got a bit more room. So, wind that back. Put my little board on. If you've got a lathe and you're going to take your chuck on and off regularly, make a little board, two little bits of timber just to grab each side. 
little board like that if you drop that chuck you're not going to knacker the ways <clears throat> Okay, so that chuck screws on. So, I bought from our DG tools a collet ER25. I'd have been better with an ER40, but when I bought my milling machine, which you'll see in another video, it came with a full set of ER25 collets and a collet chuck. So it just was logical for me to stick with ER25 now this is that you can buy an ER25 for one of these with an MT2 on that brays in there and you put a, a, a rod in from the back and lock it in this isn't this is on its own backing it came with it and it wasn't a lot of money so that just screws on and then out of a bit of rod I just made a that just screws on And there you got an AR25. Now, I, this and this sort of come together and three screws hold it together. Uh, and what I did, I undercut this and then I put it in loosely, tapped it up loose, uh, put a DTI in the taper in here. Um, and I think I put a piece of rod in as well. I if you look at one of my videos, you'll see what I did. Uh, and I knocked it around again until I got it pretty much bang on and then nips it everything tight it's a right good addition and you take a bit of room out of here so you end up with um, plenty of room in this area I just thought I'd show it I won't take it off it was just an addition that I thought I'd show okay and something else I never showed that I'd done and it's nothing really it's a bit of a botch but it works um, one of the things that you have is you always get crap on here and I mean this has got a few marks on it it's not in perfect condition it's pretty good but it isn't perfect uh, so I'll put that on it's just a bit of angle iron piece of plastic and it, it so when I'm working anywhere from there forward I don't get any swarf on the bedways at all um, only trouble is when you get to there that's your limit because it's going to start catching but it works Okay, that was just an add-on.